Hey everybody, how's it going? Joe's Neon here. Hey listen, I've been trying to get a video out for you folks, but I'm having a hard time. As you can see from my last shop talk, uh, for some reason my media player in my computer won't let me download longer than a 15 minute segment. So um, since I'm, you know, not very versed in, in editing and whatnot. You know, I like to do my videos in, in a one-shot impromptu situation, you know. I just give you a video right off the cuff, right off the hip, and I found out a lot of folks have liked it like that. So listen, here's the deal. Um, I'm going to give you a quick shop talk here. This is going to be shop talk oh, number 27. Can you believe it already? Number 27. Uh and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit it into 15 minutes. I don't normally, um, I never get a shop talk in in less than 25 minutes. But anyhow, I got a lot of stuff to cover and uh, here we go. So, um, shout outs. Uh, <clears throat> WCW Working Class Woodsman. Check him out. He's up in New Hampshire. Really cool bunch of guys. He's, uh, he hangs out with Sarge Faria from the uh, Outdoorsman School and Guide Service, I do believe it's called. Great channel. Check out Sarge. He's a great guy. And uh, he also hangs out with um, my buddy Mikey DeLucia. I couldn't believe it. That is so cool. You know, so yeah, working class woodsman. Go check him out. Great channel. N.H. Trapper. I believe it's New Hampshire Trapper. N.H. Trapper. Go check him out. He's just getting started. He's got a great channel. He really does a great job on his videos. Great trapping information. I highly suggest it. Go check him out and sub him and tell him that Joe's Neon sent you, right? So, uh, hey, Sean James, thanks for being a faithful viewer, man. I really appreciate it. That's very cool. Um, I really like your comments. I like it when you watch my vids and just wanted to say hey. So, uh... I want to move on to um, my totally off the wall segment is going to be the main part of all my shop talk videos now. It's going to be totally off the wall. For this evening's video, there's two things that I want to show you. Um, by request from Captain John uh, out in uh, Steuben, Maine. Captain John, what's up? You guys don't know who Captain John is. Go check out Captain John's bar, man. Great, great YouTube channel. Um, he wanted to see more of my gun cleaning kit and a little better understanding of how I put it together and what it's all about. So that's what we're going to go to for um, totally off the wall. Here we go. All right, so here we go, folks. What you got here is 3 8 inch plywood. Okay. And what I did is I basically glued it together and built a closed box. And you can see I nailed it with some fine brads. And then what I did is I took it and I ran it around a table saw with a fence. So I cut top and bottom. Top is about an inch. Bottom is about, I'd say, three inches. Okay. I got brass corners on it. I've got uh, brass hasps. Good sturdy handle. Another brass hasp. Let's get inside. All right. Here you go. Closed cell foam. I've got my jags. All I did was cut a slice in the foam to hold my uh, pieces in. Foam, cut slices in it, holds all your swabs. Your brushes, whatever you need. Here's my gun care. I like Ezox. It's a synthetic, really super great product. If I need something nasty, I've got a uh, ammonia-based product here, RB17. Here's my Borlite. Come on, Borlite. There's my Borlite. Okay. Here I've got cleaning rods, small caliber. Right up through rifle, I also use this for my handguns. Here's my shotgun rods, okay? In here, I've got a lower drawer. These are wood burnings that I did. I burned this uh, into the wood. Burn that buck into the wood. And uh, yeah, once you get into here, just a couple simple hinges, okay? 
you get in here and you have cash register drawers. You can get them in a hobby shop. It's got my cleaning patches in it. I've got more swabs and bores in here. Jags, cleaning patches here. I've got my, my handgun cleaning stuff for my 40 cal. I've got more uh, patches here, extra batteries for my bore light, my swabs right here. And uh, yeah, it works out great. I like these bore snakes. These are nice, really nice. They work great. I got one for my shotgun and I got one for my 22. This is a really high end um, lubricant. STOS, that's what I use on my action for my semi-automatics. Good stuff. All right, so you notice that I paid, painted the inside of my case black. Okay, now I have these two pieces here that you see on the bottom. Okay, when you pick these up, three quarter inch pine, holes drilled, pins set accordingly. Okay, lined with suede. Okay, you got that? Got the pins. Now I got a hole up through the bottom. See that? So what I do is I just take it and stand it on a pin. Depending on what firearm I'm using, I can adjust, okay? For this case, I'm going to leave it. I'll put it right here. Here's your forearm piece, okay? Same thing. All right. You got your holes drilled. Accordingly measured. You got your 3 8 pins in there, 3 8 holes. 3 quarter inch pine. You got your suede lining your... Your piece, and now I'm just going to slide it right on. Boom. See that? Now I'm just going to take my shotgun here. And I can take any gun, and I can just go to town when it comes to cleaning. Okay? Gun is clean. We're all done. Just take. Oh, sorry about that. Go ahead and pull it apart. Both pieces fit perfectly, locked down on their own pins. Boom, we close the case, hasp down, good heavy sturdy handle. Boom, you're off to the range or wherever you got to go. That's my gun cleaning box there, uh, Captain John. Yeah, buddy. Uh, there was something else I wanted to show you for totally off the wall. Um, I make earrings. <coughs> I make really beautiful earrings from porcupine quills and what I do is I snip the porcupine quills and I use beadwork and create these earrings I just wanted to show you folks I just made a new board of earrings so check them out those are porcupine quills these pieces right here the white and the brown and I just thread the silver through. I use different types of beads, different colored beads. But yeah, you know, totally off the wall. That's why this segment is totally off the wall. I'm really glad that I chose that name for it. But anyhow, we got to move on real quick. Question and answer. Um, Bud Moore wanted to know, how do I put the pattern in a leather sheath? Here we go. Um, give me a leather sheath. Here's a leather sheath. Give me my tool. Here's my tool. Okay, here we go. All right, bud. Are you talking about this? How do I stamp that pattern in there, that basket weave? I do it with a stamp that's just like that. Little tiny, you see the size of the end of my finger? It's a little tiny stamp. One shot at a time, bang, bang, bang. That's how I do it. If you wanna see more about it, go on YouTube and watch Stamping Leather uh, Basket Weave. And you'll totally understand how I do it. But good question, bud. Thanks for asking. Um, Swamp Ratman, uh, 2000. What is my favorite axe? I can't choose a favorite axe. It's impossible. It depends on what time of year, where I'm going, what I'm doing, what I need to do. Um, but I really, really want to say that I do love my Grands Forest Brook Small Forest axe. This axe is just amazing. They're really great. I know a lot of you folks think they're totally overpriced. You're crazy if you buy one, but 
I love it. I absolutely love it, and I feel as though I got every value from the penny I spent on it. So, I love my grounds for us, Brooks. Great, great question, buddy. Thanks for asking. Uh, Wisconsin Backwoods Project. Will um, wants to know, how does a, a rocket stove work in the cold weather? Will, the rocket stove works great. Temperature does not matter when it comes to the rocket stove at all. It's not like we're burning a fuel as if it was propane or isobutane. No. It's burning wood. Depends on what kind of wood you want to burn. Soft wood, hard wood. It's going to burn hotter with hard wood. Could be sub-zero. It's not going to matter. Great question, Will. Thanks for asking. No. Temperature does not affect how the rocket stove cooks. Johnny G, what's up with the weasel? <laughs> What's up with the weasel parts? Hey, buddy. Um, quickly, I got these big weasels. Uh, you used to be able to get these at um, Tandy Leather. These are uh, large weasels, and I used them, two of them, on this Mandela that I made. Uh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, good eye, Johnny. They're, uh, they're beautiful. Great part for that. And that leads me to my next question. Um... Rick Harris wants to know, hey, yo, what's with the coonskins? You ever made a hat? Um, that's what these are for. I have to condition them to get the hides in um, better shape for cutting and stitching. But that is my plan, Rick, is to make, um, you know, face on the front, ears full, really nice coonskin hats. So, um, anyhow, folks, don't forget to, uh, you know, ask me a question. You know, so that I can put it in question and answer. I've got some really great plans coming up for Totally Off the Wall. I have just got into some really cool stuff. I've got new flutes. Um, I just got really, really neat stuff going on that I want to show you folks. So until I can get this 15-minute video nonsense figured out, um... I will, uh, I will definitely be back for a little bit longer video. So we're going to end this shop talk um, with a joke. And the joke for this shop talk is going to be, what do you fill a box with to make it lighter? Holes. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey. Thanks a lot for watching. Leave me a comment. Don't forget to leave me a question for question and answer. And I'm going to be looking forward to shooting another shop talk at you real soon, folks. Talk to you soon.